Welcome to Statistics for Linguists 101. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the basics of statistics and how they apply to the field of linguistics. Whether you're a student of linguistics or just looking to brush up on your statistical knowledge, this tutorial is for you. Now, linguistics is the scientific study of language, but what does that entail? Well, according to Popper, a scientist, whether theorist or experimenter, puts forward statements or system of statements and tests them step by step. In the field of empirical sciences, more particularly, he constructs hypotheses or system of theories and tests them against experience by observation and experiment. Since modern linguistics is an empirical science, it also relies on experiments as well as observational data, which today mostly consists of corpus data. All of these require it that we need to learn about statistics. Now, one of the first things you need to understand in statistics is the difference between qualitative and quantitative approaches. Qualitative research focuses on understanding the meaning behind data, such as analyzing transcripts of spoken language to understand how people use language in specific contexts. Quantitative research, on the other hand, focuses on the measurement and analysis of numerical data, such as counting the frequency of specific words in a text. Let's look at a classic example, Lebov's New York study from the 1960s. William Leboeuf studied the pronunciation of R among workers of three New York department stores. Leboeuf had noticed that some people pronounced the R in words such as car and park, and others did not, car and park. In order to investigate the variation in the community, he visited three department stores, one middle class, expensive store, Saks, one inexpensive store, Klein, and one in between, Macy's. There, he asked as many assistants as he could find about the whereabouts of a product he knew to be on the fourth floor of each store. The expected answer, fourth floor, was of course carefully chosen, as it contains two examples of the R he was looking for. In fourth, the R occurs before a consonant, and in floor, it occurs at the end of the word. Now, in a qualitative study, he would have just looked at whether the R is pronounced, and particularly what type of R people were using, maybe a more retroflex or a more British type of R. Quantitative research, on the other hand, looks at how frequently people pronounce the R or not, because as it turns out, there was variation. Now, you might be wondering why linguists need statistics. Couldn't we just give raw numbers of the number of times that people pronounce the R? Well, statistics allows us to make inferences beyond what we looked at. They allow us to make inferences about language use in a population based on a sample of data. For example, by analyzing a sample of text messages, we can make inferences about the language use of all text messages. Without statistics, we would only be able to make conclusions based on the small sample of data we have. Using statistics, for example, Lavov was able to show that the pronunciation of R depended on social factors, and this was shown to be true not only for the shop assistants that he sampled. Now, what exactly is a sample? Well, a sample is a subset of a population that we use to make inferences about the population. In linguistics, a sample can be a group of people who speak a certain dialect, for example, the shop assistants from Lebov's New York study, or a group of text messages exchanged by a certain group of people. It's important to note that a sample should be representative of the population in order to make valid inferences about it. So we need to make sure that our shop assistants are representative of all the speakers in New York and their social classes. Finally, let's talk about three key concepts in statistics. That our data is objective, reliable, and valid. Objectivity means that the research is free from bias. Reliability means that the research is consistent and produces the same results when repeated. And finally, validity means that the research measures exactly what it is supposed to measure. In linguistics, an example of objectivity would be to use a standardized test to measure language proficiency. An example of reliability would be to repeat the test on different occasions and see if the results are consistent. An example of validity would be to ensure that the test is measuring what it's actually supposed to measure, such as grammatical knowledge, and not, for example, just language understanding in general. 
Okay, and that's already our first brief overview of the basics of statistics for linguists. In the next session, we will introduce you to basic statistical tests and how you do them in a free open access software called R. Now remember, statistics might at first appear a bit tricky, but with practice and patience, you'll be able to master it, I'm sure. So see you soon for our next session.